Hey yo guys, I'm back here. I'm going to give you a review of the uh, Tijuana Thunder pay-per-view that took place on Saturday, headlined by uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., as well as some quick uh, K1 uh, World Grand Prix thoughts. Um, anyways, uh, you know, overall I thought both shows were interesting, um, especially the Tijuana Thunder pay-per-view, which really didn't uh, have that much advertisement but to me this is a pay-per-view of the year candidate um so much exciting boxing action on this show you know you had a great slug thrust in the uh main event with uh caesar julio caesar chavez jr versus uh, culo uh, excellent fight there you know knockdowns knockouts an absolutely great performance from uh humberto so awesome pay-per-view definitely a candidate for pay-per-view of the year if you don't mind me saying, I just wish Top Rank would, you know, get to promote their pay-per-views a little better because really the only advertisements you see for the pay-per-views are the, uh, really at once at the end of their pay-per-view. I mean, I don't think commercial I saw for this was at the end of the, when they had the Pavlik Rubio and the Cotto Jennings fight at the end of that. So, anyways, um, that's just my thoughts about how they promote uh, the, their pay-per-views at least, but... Uh, but it's, you know, Bob Arum, so I'm pretty sure they could uh, do some interesting stuff, you know, get some better pro plugging of their pay-per-views down the line. But anyways, uh, we started things off in the night with um, Antonio Diaz uh, taking on uh, Javier Castro. Uh, I guess I should state that this, you know, was a Latin Fury pay-per-view, so fighters were of Latin or that there of ethnicity and it took place from you know a bull ring in Mexico and this it really was an awesome setting I mean it was outdoors uh, great you know event and it was in Tijuana and you know the the whole city of Tijuana got behind the event the mayor of Tijuana even made an appearance on the pay-per-view um, you know, basically saying that they were behind it you know they're trying to clean up the image of Tijuana For those of you that don't know Tijuana is like well, the worst place to be in Mexico as like there's at least probably 10 murders a day or more that take place in Tijuana. Um, it's just not a really nice place to be, so they're trying to clean it up. Uh, I mean, the mayor was getting behind it. He was giving away free tickets to the event, which I don't know will do that well for the gate, but since Julio Cesar Chavez was on the card, and he's known to actually be a sort of a draw, you know, not only on view and this minor-ish type pay-per-views, but... You know, in the lat with the Latin market, so I think the their gate should be pretty decent. I don't know what it I can't really come up with a figure at this moment, but I think it'll be pretty good. But anyways, on to the uh, Diaz versus Castro fight. Pretty good fight. Uh, you know, one of you know it wasn't definitely the fight of the night of this card, but it was a decent you know fight. You get to see uh, start things out. I mean, with the exception of the James Kirkland fight that took place a couple weeks ago, this was better than anything on that card. If you don't mind me saying. Uh, Anyways, um, it was uh, actually supposed to be um, Antonio Diaz versus uh, uh, Jose Luis Castillo, but that fight fell through and Castro was put in as it was supposed to be built up of Diaz trying to get revenge for his brother and whatnot. Um, anyways, a really uh, just a good fourth fight. I mean, uh, Castro was docked some points for doing some low blows. I mean, he did a lot of low blows as in the later portion of the fight. And... Um, yeah, Antonio Diaz got the win uh, by the judges, and I mean, he really, it was a tough, close fight either way, but Diaz did more work, and definitely the low blowings uh, didn't help the uh, Castro camp at all. Then we went to the next fight, which was, it was for the vacant uh, interim uh, WBO Bantamweight Championship. It was uh, Fernando Montiel uh, destroying um, Argentinian uh, Diego Silva. He just absolutely uh, destroyed Silvo, did uh, Fernando Montiel. Really, that's basically how you can sum it up. I mean, Mon uh, excuse me, um, Diego Silva really didn't get his, any chance to be in the game. I mean, Silva got disoriented. I mean, he couldn't make up his mind on what type of punches he wanted to throw. And um, Montiel just blasted him, and I believe this fight ended uh, within the third round. Yeah, yeah, stopped in the third round. Really couldn't get anything going. I mean, Two, at least two 10-8 rounds for me for Montiel. So really, uh, what they're trying to do set up now is a potential fight that would take place on Showtime. More than likely would be uh, 
Montiel versus uh, Vic the Baby Bull Darchinian, uh, or yeah, a Baby Bull Darchinian. Well, Vic Darchinian anyway. Uh, so that should just be you know a really good fight. Is uh, I'm a fan of you know both these guys, especially Darchinian. So that should be a excellent, excellent fight. Um, and then we go to the semi-main event, which I already made mention of, was Humberto Soto making a statement that he wants the winner of Pacquiao uh, as he absolutely destroyed Antonio the T-Rex Davis. Absolutely another decimating performance here. Uh, so Soto is back. I mean, he definitely was really dedicated to himself to this one. Um, absolutely awesome performance, like I said. I, I can't make mention of that enough. I mean, he drops uh, Davis, you know, in the first round. It was more of a flash knockdown, if you don't mind me saying more than anything. Um, but, uh, you know, Davis was able to stay in there, uh, but in the third round, things just got, uh, you know, out of hand, really. He got dropped again, I believe. Then he tried to, you know, clinch and fight inside, but that didn't really work at all. And then eventually, uh, Davis went down at least three times, I think, in the fourth round. Three times in the fourth round, and Soto gets the win as the you know the referee uh, makes the uh, re Roberto Ramirez Jr. makes the stoppage you know a good stoppage. I think he could have maybe stopped it a bit sooner as Davis was just out on his feet. He stopped it actually at the right point because Davis kind of made this weird motion when he was just out on his feet at all. Soto gets the victory, uh, and then we went to the main event of the evening. This was Julio Cesar Chavez versus, uh, Lu uh, I believe it was, what, Luis Culo? I know his name was Culo for sure. Uh, it was Culo, yeah, I know it was Culo, but anyways, um, this fight was just fantastic. Um, really good, oh, excuse me, it was Luciano Culo. Excellent fight, I mean, you know, both these guys tried to, you know, punch each other into dust uh, in the early goings. Um, really for, you know, since this fight was in Mexico, one of the things was uh, that apparently the the boxing agencies, or the WBO, I believe, uh, said that they had to say the scores to the crowd at the end of the fourth and eighth round, which I'm not a fan of. If I know, maybe it's just in Mexico, but definitely I'm not a fan of this. And you could tell there was some biasness in the judging, as two judges had, uh, I believe at the end of the eighth, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. up by, you know, a considerable amount. When, you know, one judge had him up uh, 77, 75, which to me is where he would be, you know, if anything. That's the one you could make an argument about. To me, I thought Kulo actually, you know, he brought a real strong fight game up to him. I mean, you could even make an argument that Kulo was up. He may have been up on my scorecards up at that point. I don't remember how I scored it at this at this particular moment, but he really brought it. I mean, he definitely won the first couple of rounds. I think kind of sh uh, uh Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., um, that's to me just my plan, uh, or what I thought there, uh, but yeah, this is just a bloodbath, I mean, I know, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., he got, uh, cut as well, did, um, uh, Lu Luciano Culo, he, I think his, his nose got broken, and this blood was just streaming right onto, uh, the white trunks there of, uh, uh, Chavez Jr., excellent fight, you know, going, you know, Eventually, like we started, started you know fighting off the ropes and whatnot, with or Chavez Jr. at least did, and you know both guys were just bringing it. And towards the end, these guys just kept it in the ring and just continued the hectic pace. I mean, one of the things that uh, Kulo thought was going to go to his advantage was the cardio, but actually it was more so uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Uh, getting the win there. You know, actually winning that aspect of it, the cardio. Really good pay per view overall. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. eventually gets the win uh, at the end of the ten rounds. Wish it would have gone maybe a bit longer. This is just an awesome fight. Really enjoyed this pay-per-view. Definite thumbs up. Uh, hopefully, you know, there is a replay that you were able to see or find it by some other means. I don't know how, but uh, really it was some great stuff on this card. Um, looks like uh, they could potentially put uh, Cesar Chavez Jr. maybe against the Manny Pacquiao. Um, I know that's one of the potential options for him there. Um as well, um, but really, um, he could all, he, one of the, I think one of the other fights they're trying to get him is uh, John Duddy, uh, which would be another good fight, but really enjoyed this, definitely look forward to the next set of, uh, next pay-per-view that Top Rank's going to put on, I believe it's another Latin Fury type theme, so I'm looking forward to that as well, um, yeah, so hopefully, you know, Top Rank definitely stepped it up from their last pay-per-view, which was just 
It was such a bore. I think it was just two fights that were absolutely mismatched. This one, you had completely even fighters. You know, in the main event, which is what you wanted. Yeah, there was two mismatches really on here, but that's just... Actually, in reality, it wasn't... Um, the Soto Davis fight really isn't a mismatch. I mean, both guys were technically even. It was just that uh, Soto just wanted it more and absolutely steamrolled uh, uh, Davis. Maybe in the the 115 pound uh, division fight, that was more of a mismatch. But I don't know. I think I think it was just more so the, the fact that this pay per view had more fights with uh, guys on even terms. That's just my opinion there. Um, quickly, some K1 thoughts. Um, Gotta say uh, one thing quickly, but when a lot of people are get uh, are hating on Michael Chavello, the voice of K1 here, you know, for he's an Australian commentator. I like him. You know, he adds. You know, there's some mini stories in between. You know, these fights, uh, especially the main event of Alistair Overeem and uh, Remy Bonjaski. Really, I think he does a good job. You know, he's a Jim Ross. You know, basically, if you've never seen K1, uh, he's a Jim Ross type commentator where he, you know, he over you know, some stuff, but, you know, to me, that's good, you know, overacting, you know, uh, it's not good all the time, but it's good, you know, a majority of the time, at least more, like, at least 75% of the time, I'm fine with it, because you got to add the storiness, and, you know, you got to keep people interested, and, you know, it's just, you know, it's going to break it down here, like, just stuff like that, I like that, he did a good job of that, and you can tell he's just such a pro wrestling fan, when, uh, Saki was basically coming to the ring, at, I believe it was for his first fight, um, where he was just basically jogging. You had uh, uh, Chevello say, "Look, he's running to the ring like the Ultimate Warrior." And it was speaking in, you know, of Saki, you know, in the the final show of the the year, uh, Saki came out to Goldberg music, and he's like, "Hey, it's Goldberg music." So you can tell that the voice Michael Chevello, Michael Chevello, is a big uh, pro wrestling fan, which I get a kick out of. But anyways. This fight was hyped around two things. It was the heavyweight title tournament as uh, Badr Hari had been stripped of it due to the fact on how he acted at the end of 2008 when he stepped on uh, Rebbe Bojanski's head and whatnot, which is absolutely illegal in K1. And so we had to have a tournament set up in here. Uh, and of course it was headlined by the Rebbe Bojanski versus Alistair Overeem fight. Anyways, the tournament was kind of a shocker, not going to lie, as... Uh, the first fight, which was a complete shock to me, it was uh, Kajiro Maeda knocking out uh, Melvin Manhoff. This is just stunning because Melvin Manhoff is a guy that absolutely rocked Mark Hunt. And Mark Hunt doesn't get rocked. And I was just stunned by that, that uh, Kajiro Maeda... First of all, Kajiro Maeda was an alternate in the tournament. And, you know, he knocks out uh, Melvin Manhoff. Eventually, so he gets to meet the winner in the finals of uh, Tyron Spong and uh, Gokan Saki in a fight that was pretty even. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it was every round. Uh, every every round was a draw, so they had to go to overtime with Saki getting the victory there as he dropped Spong. Um, so in a fight that really wasn't that interesting, whatever. But he got the win there. Um, to the tournament of the uh, the finals of the tournament here. Which was uh, Saki and uh, Maeda, uh, yeah, Maeda, um, which was a pretty good fight overall. Um, so, just trying to get here, just quickly some thoughts. Yeah, this fight was pretty interesting. Um, you know, and you know, uh, Saki gets the win. Uh, or excuse me. Maeda gets the win, you know, and the guy that's the alternate gets the victory there. Um, it was much of the same for Saki as, you know, it was the fight there with Tyron Spong as they went, you know, a lot of draw rounds and whatnot. Um, so we have uh, to go to the um, scorecards and whatnot. Maeda won a majority decision. Uh, what not, not maybe the greatest way to win, but hey, the alternate good story the alternate wins and it's a Japanese person who wins when you know the Japanese MMA scene is completely dead because there's no true Japanese star I mean yeah Shinya Aoki is making you know a run for that but really MMA is taking a big downturn so now K1 has someone that they can uh, you know be proud of I don't think that uh, Maeda will last that long as a champion um, that long but uh, I still, it's a good story, and good for Japan to have someone like that that they can, you know, rely on. And then the main event really was not the greatest fight as well. It was Bonjaski and Overeem, you know, in a draw. 
or a tight fight, really, with Bonjaski nearly winning. And, you know, the big storyline here was could K1 overcome the MMA fighter since Alistair Overeem absolutely rocked uh, Bader Hari on the night show on New Year's Eve. So, I mean, that's what they wanted to do. And that was one of the storylines that I thought Chavello played up well, which is something you need to do. And, you know, he brought up the whole uh, um, press conference thing where... Uh, Overeem and I believe his wife or girlfriend, I'm not sure which is which, brought uh, Bonjaski, you know, uh, a replica statue from the Academy Awards saying that he did the best acting job. And then Bonjaski, like a true pro, you know, he dissed Overeem and made all that, you know, seem very minuscule, but saying that, Overeem, you got to get off the steroids. These drugs are destroying your mind, whatnot. Your ears look a little funny and whatnot. Hysterical stuff, but the fight wasn't all that great. And Bonjaski gets the win uh, via the scorecards um, and whatnot. Really, you know, uh, one of the fights I was disappointed that didn't get to take place was uh, Errol Zimmerman. Um, he was supposed to take on Badr Hari, but unfortunately an injury happened to Hari, and that pulled him out of it. So um, we had Errol Zimmerman having to take on an alternate, which, uh, you know, it was another close fight. It was Errol Zimmerman and Peter Ertz. Peter Ertz was just trying to, you know, reestablish himself in the world of K1 as, you know, he got destroyed in the final, sh final, final show, like the final K1 full show of 2008 by Badr Hari himself. So, really, that's just my thoughts there. Anyways, um, I will be back tomorrow for the UFC Fight Night 18 predictions. I know it's a big weekend. There's so much stuff. I really... Uh, the Sufa company is throwing a big wrench in my path since this is WrestleMania weekend and whatnot, WrestleMania build. We'll try to get my predictions out probably probably Friday at the after SmackDown. I'm not expecting SmackDown to be much of anything as SmackDown is basically going to be the match uh, between Shelton and MVP and it's going to be a lot of stuff from fan access. So that's just my thoughts there. Uh, but really, it's going to be a busy, busy, busy weekend. Uh, you know, with Mania and all Bellator and WEC and Dream and whatnot. But anyways, uh, and the uh, the fight from Montreal between Kendall Holt. Uh, so that's just my thoughts there. Uh, anyways, that's it for me. I'm out. Peace.